السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد We would like to welcome everyone today for a very special lecture with a very uh, special guest of ours who mashallah Mubarak took time out of his busy schedule uh, to benefit us and the Muslims and specifically the youth and uh, we just want to get right into it as we've started a couple minutes late so without further ado inshallah our dear respected elder and brother Amir Tafabbal. And uh, just sorry, just before that, uh, at the end of the lecture, we'll actually be having a special guest, inshallah, joining us. And uh, we'll have a little bit of a discussion panel. And uh, if there's any comments uh, in relation to the lecture, then uh, we can discuss some of those points. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Tafabbal, akhi, jazakallah. Naam, inshallah. Naam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa hir rabbil alameen. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, الحمد لله may Allah subhanahu wa taala continue to bestow His mercy and favor upon you and this entire ummah, insha Allah, because only by the fadl of Allah that we only receive. Any benefit in this life and the next, and only by the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we will enter His paradise that He has prepared for the believers. So, when the brothers reached out to me, Alhamdulillah, as he mentioned, you know, I'm never really too preoccupied to do anything that's pleasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, you know, I ask that you know, the brother accept that you know. Is a pleasure and an honor to be able to do that which is pleasing to Allah by calling the people to the truth and then by advising, you know, the people to remain firm upon that which is correct and to fear and abstain from that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we chose a particular topic today, inshallah, titled The Virtues of Youthfulness in Islam. This is a very important matter because Islam rests upon the shoulders of the generation to come. And those who have preceded and those who strove hard to carry the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, there will become a time. There will come a time when this will become a difficulty in some matters in regards of carrying the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. So then this obligation and this responsibility will fall on the shoulders of the generation to come. So it's important to understand the virtue of youthfulness in this blessed deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam. And the virtues of youthfulness in regards to implementing the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a ni'mah from Allah that we're able to gather in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to benefit one another in doing that which is pleasing to him. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place barakah in this gathering. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in that which is good and protect us from that which is evil and make us from those who are the best of the people for the people. Alhamdulillah. So first, there's an authentic narration where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the feet of the son of Adam will not move on the day of resurrection from his Lord until he is asked about five. So the feet of the son of Adam will not move on the day of Yom Kiyama from his Lord until he is asked about five. He is asked about his life and how we spent it, about his youth and how he used it, about his money from where he earned it and what he spent it on and what he did with what he know. This is a very, very important hadith and it explains in itself 
the virtue of youthfulness and the virtue of taking this loan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, meaning the very souls within our bodies, our limbs, and all that Allah has entrusted us with, that we will be questioned about these things. And understanding this will only aid you in adhering to the obligation of fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance to the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you ponder on this hadith, inshallah, it will increase you in taqwa. It will increase you in iman and it increase you in taqwa. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-basir, he's al-samir, he's the all-seeing, he's the all-hearing. So there's nothing, nothing that will ever elude the knowledge, the sight, or the hearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and answer about what we did with this loan. So the feet of the son of Adam, alayhi salam, would not move on the day of resurrection from his Lord until he asked about five. So about his life and how we spent it. It is important, yet Iquan, that we remind ourselves, starting with myself first and foremost, that we are reminded that this life is short, that this dunya is fleeing from us. So that the time that we are allotted or the time that we are given, it is incumbent upon us to maximize that time in doing that which is pleasing to Allah. Because the final abode is everlasting. And the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for the believers who live and die upon La ilaha illallah or Muhammad Rasulullah. And by his mercy we will enter it. And we will spend an eternity in a state of bliss. But before that can even occur, we have to first implement what is obligatory upon us in this life. And as adhering to the commands and the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we'll be asked about our lives and how we spent it. And our youth and how we used it. Because many of the youth today, we live very, very reckless lives. And many of the youth they have this understanding that when they live to be at a certain age, then they will adhere to the commands and the obligations and the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, some of the youth believe, inshallah, when I make it to be 50 years old or whatever the case may be, then I'll start praying all of my sunnahs. Well, if I live to be a certain age, inshallah, tabatakallah, I'll start implementing voluntary fast. Or I'll start enjoying the good and forbidding the evil and so on and so forth. But this day is not promised. And when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to be questioned about our youth and how we spent it. And another thing that has become a fitness that is widespread is the affair of wealth. And we will be questioned about our wealth and from where we earned it and what we spent it on. So where we earned it and what we spent it on. So when this day comes, the wealth that we earn, it it must come from a halal source. It must come from a halal means. And what we spend it on Insha'Allah will be in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And giving charity to the masakeen and the orphans and so on and so forth. Things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we're supposed to do with our wealth. Because this is what we'll be questioned about. And we'll also be questioned about our knowledge. What we knew and what we did with it. 
or what we did with what we know. And for many of us who study the book by Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the three fundamental principles, which explains the questions that will be asked in the grave. We'll be asked, who's our Lord? What is our religion? And who was the messenger that was sent? And we know in this book from the statement of Imam Bukhari, Al-Bukhari Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, Al-ilmu qabla qawli wal-amal. Knowledge precedes speech and actions. So we know that it's not permissible for us to make a statement or perform an act without knowledge. So this is one of the things that we'll be questioned about when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yom Qiyam. So we'll be asked about our life and how we spent it, our youth and how we used it, and our money from where we earned it and what we spent it on and what we did with what we know. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the age of my ummah is between 60 to 70 years of age. And the least of them live beyond that. That the age of my ummah is 60 to 70 years of age. And the least of them live beyond that. So what we derive from this hadith, first and foremost, that life is short. Life is short, ya ikhwan. And even if one lives to 60, most of our life is spent in the state of being shad or being young, which is from 15 to 40. So even if we live to be 60, inshallah, most of our life is spent in the state of being young, which is from 15 to 40. And once again, this is what we'll be questioned about. So the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that my ummah is between 60 to 70 years of age. And the least of them live beyond that. So many of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam companions and the best of them were in this age group when they accepted Islam. When they accepted Islam, they was within this age group. And many of the people who ascribe themselves to the Sunnah is important for us to understand, Ya Ikhwan, that many of the companions were young. Many of the companions were young. And some of the most virtuous from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were from the Shabbat. Even some of them led military expeditions in their teenage, as teenagers leading war expeditions. So when we read about some of the youth from Mu'ad, Mu, uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabu or Musab ibn Umayyah or Abu Musa al-Ashari, so on and so forth, there's a lot of the Shabbat. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Anas ibn Malik, and the list goes on. Many of the most virtuous of the companions were young in age. And when we look at our youth today, many of them are completely deterred from understanding the virtue of some of the companions during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their age and what they were entrusted with and the responsibilities that they had to deal with. Many of the youth today are oblivious of some of these matters. And it's important that some of the youth, especially the believing youth, invest in understanding what was the virtue of the youth during the time of the Prophet Wasallam and the most virtuous generations of Muslims. To understand what is incumbent upon you today. And what the youth should be focused on today. 
There's an authentic narration on authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are seven whom Allah will shade on a day where there is no shade but his. They are a just ruler, a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah, one whose heart is attached to the masajid, two who love each other, meet each other, and they depart from each other for the sake of Allah. And a man who was tempted by a beautiful woman of high status, but he rejects her by saying, I fear Allah. And one who spends in charity and hides such that his right hand does not know what his left hand has given. And one who remembers Allah in private and he weeps. So this also explains the virtue of the youth. That the youth that attached themselves, that grew up and attached themselves to the masajid, those who frequent in the masajids in their communities, those who are frequent when the rules are given, when benefit is given and obtained, and adhering to the masajid, networking with the elders, and contributing to the growth and expansion of the Ummah by way of the masjid. This individual will have shade on a day where there's no shade but the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this narration also speaks of the benefit of the youth. And these are things that many of the youth should ponder and think about especially in this day and time when the youth are under consistent attack from the ills and affairs of this dunya, peer pressure, you know, hip-hop music, you know, sports, entertainment, all of these things. May Allah protect us from it, inshallah. When this narration, it speaks about the virtue of the young one, the youth, who attaches itself to the masjid. SubhanAllah Aldeen, I, I visit a lot of communities. Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of masajid around the United States that many of the youth are becoming more invested in spending time in the masjid. But it's also incumbent upon the administration of these masajid to include the youth. And not alienate the youth because of some of the things that the youth may pick up in the environments that they live in. But may, may Allah bless the youth who invest their time in attaching themselves to the masjid. And attaching themselves to the benefit that comes with being in the masjid. May Allah increase you and continue to keep you firm upon this, inshallah. And another authentic narration on authority of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, take advantage of five before five. Take advantage of five before five. So take advantage of five before five, meaning your youth before your old age, your health before your illness, your wealth before poverty, your free time before your work, in your life before your death. SubhanAllah Aleem. Many of you are familiar with this narration, but because we busy ourselves with so many things, we tend to forget about the virtues and benefits of these narrations, these statements of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, take advantage of five before five. You take advantage of these five things before five things occur. Your youth before your old age. As I mentioned earlier, many of the youth, they have this prognosis or this idea that once they become of old age, then they'll start being more invested in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Investing more time in performing the wafu, 
meaning sunnas, praying sunnas, voluntary fasting, giving more charity, being more kind to the neighbors, being more respectful towards the elders, and so on and so forth. When this day, like I said, is not promised. So it's important that you take advantage of this before old age comes. And also the prophesy that I mentioned, take advantage of your health before illness. Take advantage of your health before illness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, لا تقتلوا أنفسكم Do not harm yourselves. Or do not kill yourselves. So it's important that you adhere to your health before your illness. And do not do anything that will speed up this process. And when I say anything, meaning smoking cigarettes, using illegal substances, drugs, alcohol, so on and so forth, these things will only impede your health. Not giving your body its rights, sleep deprivation as well. All of these things are conducive to taking care of your health before you are stricken with illness. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned your riches or your wealth before poverty. And this is for many who Allah has favored with wealth and become complacent, thinking that they may not ever be tested with poverty. So if Allah favors you with wealth, you should spend it in this cause. You should spend it in doing something that's conducive to increasing the benefit of the ummah, raising the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, with the understanding of the Salaf al-Sali. Spend this way your equal before you test it with poverty. And your free time, your free time before your work. Many of us are grossly negligent when it comes to our free time. Many of us, when we have ample time to do something of benefit, we find ourselves doing something that is completely contrary to that. Well, you have to be loud, and this is something that we have to be mindful of. And more importantly, your life before your death. Because Allah says, Kullu nafsin Verily, every soul will taste death. So we know that death is inevitable. So how we live is more important. Because we know we have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who meet him with good deeds that exceed our bad. And may Allah make us from those who meet him with sincerity in our heart, and he class in our heart, and he man in taqwa. May Allah make us from those who enter his paradise. I mean. In another narration by Abu Umama, he reported that a young man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to commit adultery. SubhanAllah. It's an authentic narration. That a young man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, give me permission to commit adultery. And the people turned to rebuke him, saying, Uskud, Uskud, be quiet, be quiet. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, come here. The young man came close and he told him to sit down. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Would you like that your mother? Would you like that your mother? Meaning, would you like that your mother commit zina? The man said, No, by Allah, may I be sacrificed for you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, neither would people like it for their mothers. Would you like that your daughter? Would you would you like that your daughter commit zina? The man said, No, by Allah, may I be sacrificed for you. And the Prophet said, Neither would people like it for their daughters. 
Neither would the people like it for their daughters. Would you like that your sister? The man said, no, by Allah, may I be sacrificed for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, neither would the people like it for their sisters. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, would you like that it be for your aunts to commit zina? And the man said, no, by Allah, may I be sacrificed for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, neither would the people like it if their aunts. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam placed his hand on him and said, Ya Allah, forgive him his sins, purify his heart, and guard his chastity. After that, the young man never again was inclined to anything sinful. SubhanAllah Adeem. From this narration, there's so many benefits that can be derived from it. So real quick, it just shows you, you know, the audacity of this young child, this youngster, to approach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not just any elder, but the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give him permission to commit zina. SubhanAllah. But when you look at the hadith, and you look at how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with this individual, something that many of us from the elders can take in consideration because many of us contribute to some of these atrocities. Some of us contribute to some of these atrocities by the way that we deal with the Shabbat. Some of us are very rigid. Some of us are very harsh. Some of us end up doing things that turn the youth directly into the sins that we're trying to prevent them from falling into. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you look at how he dealt with the youth, the people rebuked him right away. The people's behavior was similar to some of the people today. Immediately condemning the youth for some of the shortcomings, deficiencies, and flaws that they possess. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, so on and so forth, that contribute to many of the youth Falling into these affairs. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said come here. Meaning he was not. In accordance. Or allegiance. With the people that rebuked him. He told him to come here. And he used hikmah. He used wisdom. First thing he did was ask the young man to sit down. Ask him to sit down. Because this diffuses a lot of tension. It puts a person at ease. It puts them in a state of attentiveness. So there's wisdom in how he dealt with him from the very beginning before he even spoke. He asked him to sit down. Then the Prophet Sallallahu asked him a question. That will cut into any young kid. Any misguided youth, would you like, would you like this for your mother? Would you like this for your mother? Would you like that your mother commits Zina? And he said, no, by Allah, may I be sacrificed for you. Obviously, this is something that he doesn't want. Then the Prophet said something, explained to him, neither would the people like that it be their mother's. So we're showing the contrast between extracting an understanding from within his own self and showing him in contrast that the people will also be in disagreement with this act. And then he also goes into asking about other women who play very significant roles in our lives, whether it be our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our daughters. None of the people would like this for their mothers. No, none of the people would like this for their sisters, their daughters, or their aunts. And this is how the Prophet Sallallahu dealt with them. And like I said, there's many 
benefits that come from this. And in conclusion, after going through these series of examples of how this would be something that would not be pleasing to himself alongside with the people, he concluded it by making dua for him. He asked Allah to forgive him for his sins, to purify his heart and guard his chastity. Alhamdulillah. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, "The hate what Allah has hated and love for your brother which you love for yourself. So the way the Prophet Sallallahu dealt with the youth is because he had an extremely profound understanding of the virtues of youthfulness in Islam. And he had a very profound understanding of how to be gentle and cordial and respectful to the youth. Because many of us, and because of the generational gaps between the elders and the youth, there's a disconnect. There's a discord and a disconnect through these two generations. And many of the youth have very little respect for the elders and the elders have very little respect for the youth. Even though we both ascribe ourselves to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, with the understanding of the most virtuous generations of Muslims. Still not sufficient enough to bridge this generational gap. And this is where the problem lies. Because many of us have abandoned, abandoned the aslub of the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions, radiallahu anhu. In another authentic narration, it was mentioned that indeed Allah is amazed by the youth who doesn't have an inclination towards misguidance. Now this right here, alhamdulillah, this is a very, very beneficial nugget that many of the shabab should hold close to their heart, that Allah is amazed. SubhanAllah, Allah is amazed by the youth who doesn't have an inclination towards misguidance. May Allah preserve the youth who adhere to this statement and may Allah make those who are misguided May Allah guide those who are misguided. Because Allah is amazed with the youth who do not have an inclination to misguidance. So once again, this goes back to the virtue of the youth who busy themselves with attaching themselves to the masajid, sitting in circles where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala name is being mentioned and his praise is being mentioned sitting amongst those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand around those who Allah has guided and blessed and bestowed upon, you know, knowledge upon, and so on and so forth. These are the most beneficial environments for the youth today. To not only be around the elders who fear Allah and those who fear Allah, but also to choose companions who have these characteristics. Now there's a hadith that was graded da'if by Sheikh al-Labani, rahimahullah ta'ala, but the meaning is sound. So the hadith is weak, but the meaning is sound. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the youth is a branch of insanity and the women are the rope of the shaitan. Now, I know this hadith may stir or have your head spinning, but the meaning of this, this, this statement is sound. Although the hadith, I repeat, the hadith was graded da'if for weak by Sheikh al-Labani, rahimahullah ta'ala, but the meaning is that the youth squander their youth as if they are insane. And the shaitan uses women as bait on a rope. This is the meaning. That the youth squander the youth. Because we already mentioned. 
We already mentioned the hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. When he said, take advantage of five before five. And one was your youth before old age. So the meaning of this statement is sound that you have many abundance of the youth today who squander their youth as if they're insane. They just squander their youth. As if at some point they'll land at a place where they can now rectify the affairs that they neglected when they were young. So this squandering of the youth is an act of insanity. And then shaitan, he uses the women as bait on a rope. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that he did not leave the men with no fitna greater than the women. No fitna greater than the women. So even if you have women who have haya, who practice shyness, guard their chastity, so on and so forth, there are also women out there that the shaitan use as bait on a rope to lure men into things that are displeasing and forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as I mentioned, the hadith is weak, but the statement has meaning and it's something that we can walk away with some benefit understanding that the meaning of this statement is definitely something that conforms with the state of the youth today and even the state of the women in regards of shaitan targeting those who are deficient in iman or deficient in taqwa or deficient in understanding the religion of Islam and utilizing the women's emotions against them and so on and so forth to bait others into sinful deeds that Allah has forbid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all things evil that you ordain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youth, protect our women, protect our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bestow his mercy and favor upon this blessed Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah azza wa jail continue to make us from those who do deeds that are pleasing to him so that by his mercy we can enter his paradise on your Mukiyama. Alhamdulillah. So now to expound, inshallah, briefly before we conclude this talk, I just want to say to the youth that are listening, and those of you who are listening, I pray that Allah put it in your heart to share whatever benefit may have came from this, which is solely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and anything that is said from me that is incorrect, it is from myself, my deficiencies and knowledge, and the whispers of the shaitan. Now many of you may know my story, some of you may not, but I was born and raised in the streets of Harlem, and I found myself involved in virtually everything that I see the youth involved in today. And only by Allah's mercy, I was guided to this blessed deen of Islam, to where I stand before you today as your brother in Islam, your brother Amir, your brother in Islam, your brother in Tawheed and Sunnah, with the understanding of the companions. And this is a ni'mah, to be able to stand before you as a believing man, opposed to the things that I grew up doing when I was young. And I don't like to get into details about my previous sins because the sins that are known is the things that I normally engage people in, meaning my stint in the music business and so on and so forth. But when it came for me growing up in the streets of Harlem, it was almost imperative that growing up in the early 80s, that we will find ourselves indulged in a life of crime. That we will find ourselves committing sinful acts. That we will find ourselves doing things that are complete opposition of this blessed deen of Islam. So my message to the youth, 
my situation is justified because I wasn't guided. I didn't grow up in a Muslim home. I didn't grow up in a community where Islam was prevalent or widespread. I wasn't born or conceived by believers. I was not raised upon Tawheed and Sunnah and so on and so forth. So it troubles me more when I see Muslim who were born and raised Muslim, nurtured and cultivated upon Islam, falling into these sinful acts, falling into the street stuff, gang stuff, drug stuff, rap stuff, whatever the case may be. This is not for you. This is not what Allah has prescribed for you. Allah, by his mercy, he placed you in the bosom of that which is good. He brought you into this world through the womb of a believer. He placed you in the caring hands of a believing man and a believing woman. So for those of you who were born in this blessed religion of Islam, Know that you will truly have no excuse whatsoever when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it troubles me sometimes when I hear born Muslims say, yeah, I in my jahil days. You wasn't born jahil. You wasn't born ignorant. You were nurtured and cultivated upon sound understanding of Quran and Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf al or you were born and raised listening to the recitation of the book of Allah. Many of you were woke up at very young ages to pray Salah to Fajr next to your fathers, with your mothers and your sisters, forming ranks behind you. All of these beautiful things, sitting at the table with food that Allah has provided for you, Mentioning Allah's name and being able to nurture yourself with the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of you when, you, when you united or had reunions with your family, marriages, janazas, whatever the case may be, it was all surrounded by believers. So when you find yourself indulged in these things that are contrary to your upbringing, what you were taught, what you came to know, know that you will have to stand before your Lord as a jail and be questioned about these things. And also for the reverse, the youth who reverted to this blessed deen of Islam. You accepted this blessed deen so that you can abandon your previous ways. Do not allow the tricks of the shaitan. Do not allow the deficiencies and weaknesses of the people to have you revert backwards to something that you already know. You already know. In other words, you already know what it's hidden for. So do not make the excuse of being a revert your reasoning for returning back to ignorance and darkness. This blessed deen of Islam rests on the shoulders of the youth. And it is incumbent upon you to seek the bounties of that virtue. To seek the bounties of that virtue of being entrusted with holding up the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah, and acting upon this. Many of you ask the questions on my social media and so on and so forth about how am I able to do this? Yeah, Aki, how do you just abstain from music? How do you do this? How do you do that? I surround myself with people that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've done so much harmful things to myself and people who were in my proximity that when I found the truth and found this blessed deen, 
as a man, I had to make a sound decision. And this was separates men from boys. Men make sound decisions. Whenever you get to a fork in the road, you either can choose left or right. There's no excuse. There's no straddling in the middle. There's no putting your toe in the water to see what the temperature is. All of this procrastination is done by boys. Men make sound decisions. When you face with an evil, you choose what's better than that. If you face with two evils, you choose the lesser evil. But at the end of the day, you make a choice. And I mentioned this, and I'm going to say this in closing from another talk that I, I, I gave, is that there are two types of leaders in this world. It's those that lead and those that mislead. Those that lead and those that mislead. So for the Shabbat, I challenge you. I challenge you to be those who lead upon goodness, upon righteousness and uprightness, opposed to being those who mislead. Because either way you look at it, you're a leader. Whether you choose to lead or you choose to mislead, you will be held accountable for your flock. You will incur the sins of those who you lead. And you will incur the benefit and the goodness and the reward for those that you lead upon goodness. For those that you mislead, you will incur the sins and the bad deeds that follow them. So I say this to say as a, benefit, as a reminder to myself, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and make us better. Make us better fathers, make us better husbands, make us better sons, make us better brothers, and make, make us better neighbors. Make us the best of the people from the people. Because as Muslims, this is what we're supposed to be. And a lot of this rests on the shoulders of the youth. And don't be afraid to take these responsibilities on. Because your youthfulness is all that you need. You have the energy, you have the strength, you have the resilience. You just have to increase in beneficial knowledge and all of the tools that you will need so that you can carry the banner of something that's more weighty than anything in this dunya. And that is the statement of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah is more weighty, more virtuous, and more beneficial than anything in this dunya. So I ask Allah to make you from those who do deeds that are pleasing to him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from all things evil that he ordained. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bihamdi wa shadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ila. Jazakallahu khairan wa barakallahu feek wa sha'Allah wa mubarak. Very beneficial. We greatly appreciate the lecture. No, I mean, why yet? Jazakallahu khair for inviting me. No, alhamdulillah, it's definitely a pleasure and an honor for us and all of the viewers. And subhanAllah, there's many, many beautiful things which you said in the lecture that we could literally go point by point to analyze and discuss. I, one thing comes to mind, uh, actually, and I recall in one of your lectures, you said something very profound that I remember to this day. And if I'm not mistaken, it was previously before certain life-changing events took place. You said that we are paying for the disease, but the cure is? Free. Free, yes. It's free. SubhanAllah. Hey, listen, this statement, and, and may Allah make it, continuously a benefit because this came from the most sincerest place mm. you know that I can remember since I accepted this religion because I remember me paying for so much it was mm. always consequences good intentions but all of the things that I was doing was coming from blindness from ignorance and darkness oh. and this is why I say none of this is justifiable when you have knowledge of something that's better. Yeah. But it becomes something that, you know, it becomes a, a state of ignorance when you don't know. So now when you find truth, you understand that all these years, man, I was paying for all this hardship, all this difficulty, I was paying for it. Whether it be with wealth, whether it be with my time, whether it be with my, my physical body, you know what I'm saying, so on and so forth. I was paying for it, but Islam came free. Nobody charged me to become Muslim. No one said, Akhi, yo, you have to put some money in this bucket before you take your shahada. Akhi, listen, you need to come back. You ain't got enough money right now. You know what I'm saying? When you come back, 
for X, Y, Z, then you can take your shot. Uh-huh. Y'all can, you know what? Uh, your clothes are not sufficient. You need to go get you a new outfit, and then you can take your shot. And none of this took place. Yeah. Islam was free. Uh-huh. And everything that followed was free. This knowledge is free. You understand? And, 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 and the benefit is free. Absolutely. Having companions that fear law is free. No one that fear law is going to charge you to be their companion. Good point. Very good point. No one is going to make you feel uncomfortable about being a companion unless you're trying to deter them from fearing Allah. You know? What's going to cost you is choosing companions who are misguided. Choosing companions that are ignorant. Because the price that they're going to pay for their ignorance and for their negligence and their, and, and their um, weaknesses, so on and so forth, Following them, you're going to have to pay too. You're going to have to pay too. You know. SubhanAllah, yeah, that's a very, very good benefit. Jazakallah khair. Because honestly, that was something that stuck with me till this, till this day. And I, I literally remembered that statement which you mentioned many years ago, SubhanAllah. And uh, one thing I really liked is that previously, maybe perhaps you were in Minnesota, one of your tours, and uh, you were addressing the Muslim youth and... Uh, that's something that also got to me. And this is probably perhaps over 10 years ago when you were addressing the Shabab uh, and, and you said majority of you, or if not all of you in this hall right now, and it was a big banquet hall, if I believe in Minnesota, they were all yeah. Muslims. They were all Muslims. They were all, Muslim. all born Muslim. All from East African descent. Allahumma barak. Now say, alhamdulillah, I didn't, I didn't visit a lot of communities, whether it be a Somali community, whether it be, you know what I'm saying, Bengali community, Pakistani community, the one thing that I've learned is the commonality of the plight of the youth. Yeah. And this is where I put my focus, I'm you know. Sure. I try to avoid busying myself with affairs that's beyond my capacity. Yeah. But what I do understand from this blessed religion, from Quran and Sunnah with the Fahim of the Sahaba, Fahim. is that, you know, the misguidance of the youth and calling them back to what's correct, this is a minhaj issue. Yeah, this is a minhaj issue. You know, we have other affairs in this deen that Allah has favored other brothers who may have exceeded me in knowledge and so on and so forth. But when it comes to your brother Amir, I have an extremely soft spot for the youth because I know what it is to be young and misguided. I know what it is to be young and ignorant. I know what it is to be young and violent. I know what it is to be young and all of these things. You know? Yeah. So even when I hear the statement of the hadith, the Shaykh al-Abani, rahimahullah, who ta'ala, graded as weak, but the meaning of it is very sound because the youth, we do squander our youth. Yeah. Well, Ayaki, when I was growing up, we used to commit the most crimes when we were juveniles because we knew that our parents can come right to the priest and pick us up. Subhanallah. So the elders in the community used to utilize that. This is how we were raised. Yeah. We had the elders taking advantage of our youth, using us to do things that they would never do. But this is not the case amongst the believing Muslims. This is not the case amongst the Muslim youth. Yeah. Unless they're following someone who's in opposition of Islam. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to fall into those type of situations. Exactly. And that's where there's similarities with people of deviant ideologies and methodology. Who, who, no. Because they exploit that zeal of the youth to guide Absolutely. them. The path. Exactly. Absolutely. And this is why I urge many of the brothers, may Allah reward you for your good. Allah. But many of the two lab, many of the people who have been trusted with the imam mate and so on and so forth, you have to put more focus on the youth. I know sometimes we fall into situations where the mass shit is in jeopardy and so on and so forth. And, you know, funds got to be raised. I understand all of this. Alhamdulillah, may Allah make it easy for all of us. Mm-hmm. But in all actuality, sometimes when you place your attention on something else that is pleasing to Allah, Allah will re- rectify the affairs that you give precedence over that. Sorry. You know, Allah will, Allah will rectify those affairs. Sorry. He'll make those other affairs easy. But sometimes because we become so immersed in other matters that we miss, we miss, you know, opportunities to do an abundance of good. No. 
And that's a human deficiency. I would never grade that as something that someone is deficient in their religion. No, those are human deficiencies because sometimes it becomes difficult with the adversity or pressure that comes with, you know, governing certain things or being responsible for certain things. And as men, we fall short. Sometimes we fall short, you know, and we lose our youth. You know what I'm saying? We lose our daughters. We lose our sons. We lose our nephews, so on and so forth. And next thing you know, because a lot of times, you know, I've been to some communities, you know, may Allah make us better, um, where they, they, they put together these the, the tahfid programs and they think that's sufficient just to leave their kids there. Yeah. Or they build basketball courts and the kids got basketball to play, so they just leave them and busy themselves with that. And we go on to fundraise and then all this other crazy stuff and it, it becomes a negligent thing. Yeah. It becomes something where the, the elders become complacent. But we think like we've given the youth something to distract them, but what they need is more. Yeah. So this is where, you know, I ask a lot, you know, to make me better in my efforts, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And increase me in my efforts because this is where, this is where my heart gets softened. Yeah. When I look at the youth and I look at how much they, they, they have at their fingertips, all the information, you know, yeah. it's some benefit and there's a lot of harm. You know what I'm saying? It's some benefit. Take my statement clear. It's some benefit, but it's a lot of harm. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't have, they don't have no elders to help them navigate through that. What they'll do is start sponging up everything under the guise that is all beneficial. Absolutely. You know? um, so we have we have a lot, you know, we have a lot on our plate, you know what I'm saying? And, and the youth is very important. To me, they were very important to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Absolutely. So for, you know, for those of us who ascribe ourselves to his sunnah, then we also have to look at his attachment to the youth and how he dealt with the youth. Absolutely. Some of the most beneficial advices that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave yeah, it came, it came in the form of a hadith where he was advising the youth. Yeah, ma'ashira. Yeah, mu'ad. You know, he always was calling on the youth. And those are some of the most profound advices that came from the Prophet Sallallahu when he was advising the youth, when he was being attentive and being patient with the youth. So inshallah ta'ala for the youth, you know, that, 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 that you know, you know, witnessed or was able to benefit from this talk. Also, don't be ashamed to ask. Don't be ashamed to approach some of the elders. You know what I'm saying? For those of you, you know your community. You know the brothers of fear Allah. You know the brothers who invest their time in doing things that are beneficial. Don't be afraid to pull up on them. Because y'all pull up on Fulan, Fulan, and he ain't on nothing. But y'all have no fear pulling up on him. But you don't want to pull up on the brothers that's upon good. It's like you feel scared. You feel guilty. And the shaitan whispering to you, telling him, like, you know you ain't worthy to be talking to him. You know all you know is the cools. You can't be around him. He memorized the whole Quran. All this is from the shaitan. Those are the people you want to be around. You want to be around people that's better than you because that's what makes you better. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times people have these insecurity issues, you know, but they're ignorant and they want to be around somebody that's more ignorant than them so they can feel less ignorant. You're stupid, but you want to be around somebody that's dumber mm. so you can feel smart. But the only thing that's going to make you better is when you're around people that's better. And sometimes you got to let go of your ego. Absolutely. Because I know me. I take Quran lessons from a six-year-old. Wallah, y'all mean. A six-year-old got time to offer, and I got time. Allah. I will sit down and learn the book of Allah from a six-year-old. No Allah. pride. No ego. Because I want to meet my Lord in the right state. And that's important. Allah. You know? We all not going to be students of knowledge. We all not going to be scholars. But we can be the best Muslims that we can be. Absolutely. Especially in this day and time. And the youth, you have so much influence. Well, Law Yaki, I posted something the other day with, you know, Noriega and um, Joel Santana. May Allah guide them. Um, he was on the Drink Champs, you know, referring to me. And the impression that was made on them from two guys that know me from my previous life. Hmm. And seeing and acknowledging you know, who I became. Allah, my God. 
you know, and that comes from being steadfast upon what's correct. We are the most influential people on this planet. Everyone's talking about the Muslims. Everybody's trying to look like the Muslims. Yeah, for real. For real. That's you know what I'm saying? Hundred so, percent. Yeah. yeah. So why do you want to look like the rest when you can look exactly. like the best? Exactly. Even things as a as it relates to uh, you know these uh, graduation gowns, the origin of it, that type yeah. of show off and honor, and other things. Many things uh, people don't realize in terms of uh, don't realize they come from Islam. technology. Yeah. Subhanallah. This come from the origin is from the Muslims and comes from yeah. Islam. In some aspects, they've taken that from our cultures. That's why we should also be proud from the positivity in our cultures and take the good stuff from it. And that yeah. was the deen we need that. Yeah. Shabab, yeah. man. You got to be leaders, man. I went to the perfume shop. Everybody got, everybody got ruled. Yeah. Gucci got ruled. Roberto Cavalli, Ty got ruled. Tom <laughs> Ford got ruled. Oh, Shabab, um, Wood. I'm like, look, hey, come on. If you can't see it, yeah. how much influence how much barlaka Allah has placed in this deen in some of the most tumultuous times Allah. Islam still shines absolutely and it's still affecting the people right now as we speak so who don't want to be a part of that like, who don't want to be a part of that yep. all the athletes got beards now yeah <laughs> everybody got beards yeah you know, so how did I, I mean, you know, Barakallah. yeah, well, I figure Barakallah, man. I don't want to take up much time. Oh, yeah, we're gonna take some time. We're going to actually just introduce our guest for a little bit and we won't do it too, take it too long for anybody. Inshallah, we want to have a nice discussion. So we'll get some insight from our brother. Um, our brother, our special guest uh, for today is, uh, open your camera, Inshallah. Ayatumullah. 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 How's everything, Akhi? Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Jameel. Mashallah. Good to see your face, man. Likewise. Likewise, Akhi. Alhamdulillah. You know what's crazy? Wallah, yeah. I kid you not. I used to be good with faces. And bad uh, with names. I do. <laughs> I became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. I know every Abdul Rahman. <laughs> like no, no. I know the difference between Abdul Rahman <laughs> and Somali Abdul Rahman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, just seeing the Muslims, I, I, that's one of the things that I'm extremely grateful for. Is that Allah truly unites the hearts of the believers. Yeah, definitely. You definitely. know, when you see a brother you haven't seen in a while, it's almost like you haven't seen him in a lifetime. So, yeah, definitely. So I ask Allah to make this, you mm -hmm. know, far from the last time. Definitely. I'm able to, you know, gaze yeah. at your face. Barakallah. Likewise, Akhi. Barakallah. Barakallah. So, you know, some of the good discussions that we're having in terms of, you know, how we should be happy with our identity and be thankful for mm -hmm. what we have. You know, in terms of our Islam and how, you know, actually people want to be like us, but we don't take value in that. So obviously in this time, I'm going to bring two points up. So we'll go with the first one, kind of, so we can give a, you know, like a, um, we could uh, you know, kind of promote to the people or encourage the youth, uh, especially in the influencer and social media culture is that, you know, how can the, the Muslim youth in this time leave a legacy? You know, and when we say legacy, we don't need no. it. In the fan, you know, in the fantasy style or in the cinematic way, rather, we mean it in an impactful way. How can somebody benefit himself, his family, um, his community, and even the world? What impact or practical advices would you give to some of the youth in terms of being able to leave that impact and legacy? And so, our brother uh, Abu Saleh, inshallah, you could uh, start with that, and then our brother Amir, inshallah, will take some input from that. Barakallah, fikum, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, yani first, I would say that the, the ones who play the biggest role in the youth and that are responsible in the youth have to play a significant role in facilitating the means for them to do so. So those who, for example, their parents, starting with the parents, starting with the home. Likewise, starting with the, as our brother mentioned in, in his talk or in the discussion you guys were having, the students or the imams, those who have access to the youth, they have to play the biggest role in pushing them towards that, making them realize those type of aspirations and encouraging them and making them believe that they can do it. And it starts with 
their religion. If the youth are ignorant of their religion, they won't have a value for it. You know, they won't have they won't have this uh, this zeal. As we see, if you notice, many times we see a, a cartoon insulting, for example, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you'll find everyone screaming and, 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 and writing, you know, on social media and showing their anger towards that. However, a majority of them do not follow the Messenger of Allah in their daily lives. And so it's, a, it's more of a following the, the culture, the, co- the current culture now of um, every movement that exists, we follow it. Every social justice movement, we follow it. It's not coming from a place of actual defense of the deen, as we saw in the Sahaba with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who will sacrifice their lives and their, and their livelihood and, and everything for the Messenger of Allah and to make يعني, كلمة, يعني, the kalimah al-uliya, the highest and foremost thing, tawheed. And so it starts with those who are يعني, in charge of the youth or who have access to the youth to make them believe that they can do so and, and also to instill and embed in them the honor of Islam and the dignity of Islam. Like some of the points you, you mentioned, how everyone now wants to be like the Muslims and look like the Muslims and behave uh, in some aspects like the Muslims. The Muslims, though, are not seeing that. They're chasing the life of the kuffar. And subhanAllah, the non-Muslims see the honor in Islam. You'll find non-Muslim men, you know, on the, on the corners, if a half-naked woman walks by them, you'll see them, how they harass her and, and everything. But a sister who is covered, they'll make way for her and, and, and stand back. That's the honor of Islam. No, I'm sorry. And, subhanAllah. And if our sisters were to know, know and, and realize the honor in Islam, that honor in Islam, then they wouldn't be, you know, revealing themselves all over social media and, and following the disbelieving woman. The disbelieving woman herself is lost, looking for, you know, uh, guidance and protection and so on and so forth. And our sisters are running in, a, in the other direction. And so it begins with, like I said, those who are in charge of, of the youth or have access to the youth, starting with the home, the parents, that they have to be the first and foremost ones. And it also comes from the, the, the realization that you have something more valuable than anything else in this, in this, in this world, is, is your religion and is your, is your deen. And there's a statement that um, Umar ibn Khattab, a famous statement that he has, where he said that indeed we were a disgraceful people. Yani, inna kunna he said we were from the most disgraceful of people. He's talking about in Jahiliyyah, before Islam. And he said, فَأَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ And Allah then honored us with Islam. فَمَهْمَا نَطْلُبُ الْعِزَّةِ And he said, and regardless, if we seek in honor in anything, other than Islam, in, in other than what Allah honored us in. If we seek, whether it's another religion, whether it's another way of life, whether it's following a celebrity, whatever it is, if you seek honor and, and status and happiness, whatever it is that you're looking for, in anything other than the thing that Allah honored you with, which is Islam, then he said, bihi. Then Allah disgraced us by way of that. SubhanAllah. And so that, that, that narration of Umm al-Khattab is, is a reminder, something that youth should have on their minds that they already have, the Muslim youth, they already have the thing that everyone is seeking. Even these celebrities, we have an example, our brother, Hafidullah Amir, who he could testify to that and many other uh, you know, people who are in, in the past lost and were searching for something empty. They had whatever we seek in the dunya, they had it. And then they, were, they still felt an emptiness and still felt like something was missing in their lives. And then they found it in Islam. And so that thing is, is what, you know, as, we, as, as our brother mentioned, we have to remind the youth always of the significance of this religion um, and the importance of this religion in their lives and that they must leave behind. Because as, as in the beginning of our brother's talk, mentioned death and that all of us will, will taste death. And we will leave something behind. All of us will be leaving a legacy behind. A legacy simply means something that you leave behind after you go away yeah, and after sorry. you pass. It'll be either good or evil. Mm-hmm. And so that which you leave behind, and, 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 and if you have people following you in that, and it's khair, 
And then after you pass, you'll be reaping those rewards. And if you leave behind that which is sharr, evil, then you will likewise be reaping those rewards. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yani, the youth have to know what they have of value. And that is what you will, what will inshallah, yani Allah knows best, what will push them towards um, seeking yeah. that, that, that legacy, inshallah ta'ala. A good legacy. No, I agree with the brother. Mm-hmm. In regards to, huh? I, I wanted to mention uh, what our brother Amir said. Just wanted to mention mm-hmm. something, the two things he said that was really nice. The difference, uh, uh, good dis- everyone is a decision maker. No. You have a choice. You either make the right decision or you make mm-hmm. the wrong one. And that's what separates the that's boys from them. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was a very yeah. powerful. We, yeah, we have two types of leaders. You know, it's mm-hmm. very important to understand that, you know, either way, you're obtaining what you're seeking is leadership. Mm-hmm. You want yeah. to be a leader, right? Mm-hmm. You can either choose to lead or mislead. Mm-hmm. But not to digress, you know, I wanted to expound up with the brother. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I said, I feel the Allah, mm-hmm. that it does start in the homes. Yeah. And I say this not to justify anything. Mm-hmm. But because I visited so many communities where you know, there's the immigrant experience. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And a lot of the youth, they are the first generation of mm-hmm. their people to come to the West. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So the disconnect or the generational gap, you have a parent who is upon, you know, some type of firmness and consistency mm-hmm. in regards of their implementation of Islam. Yeah. But the thing is, in order to maintain stability in the homes, the parents, because of, you know, the strenuousness of what work entails in this country, yeah. opposed to the country that they come from. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I've visited a lot of Muslim countries, and it's like, yeah. you don't have to work 17, yeah. 18 hours a day yeah. Yeah. to take yeah. care of family of five so kids, ahead. a wife, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So these mm-hmm. are things as well that we have to look into as well and, 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 and you know, kind of couple the necessity yeah. of addressing these matters because they work mm-hmm. hand in hand. Yeah. So I say it, like I said, not to justify it, but mm-hmm. I have, you know, found some sympathy yeah. for, you know, people coming into a country mm-hmm. firm upon a certain way of living yeah. and having that challenge in mm-hmm. order to obtain stability for the home. Yeah. And then with that being such a distraction, the children are left to fend for themselves. Yeah. They encounter all these experiences not as a family. Yeah. But as an individual. Yeah. Going out, mixing in public schools, trying yeah. to seek education and so on and so forth, whatever the case may be, they're experiencing these things on their own. Mm-hmm. But this is also yeah. not an excuse. Yeah. It's just something that has to be, it's a, it's a, you know, attention has to be paid to. Yeah. And this is something that for those who are entrusted with the affairs of the people, they have mm-hmm. to invest a lot more time in helping structure the homes or restructure mm-hmm. the homes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy for us, you know, to identify with the source of the issue. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the remedy, yeah. it takes a community. Definitely. Yeah. It really takes a community. It doesn't. It's not something that rests solely on the shoulders of the parents, and it doesn't rest solely on the shoulders of the of the youth, mm-hmm. you know, so or the children. Mm-hmm. It's a collective thing that whoever is entrusted with the affairs of the people, because they're mm-hmm. the ones supposed to have the most free time so, uh, yeah. when dealing with the affairs of the people. Yeah, but unfortunately, they also have responsibilities. Yeah. So it's like a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. you know, it's a web. I look at. And that's why I said it takes brothers like us, mm-hmm. you know, to take and invest our time in trying to step up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying to step up and be a little bit more assertive mm-hmm. when it comes to dealing with the youth. Because yeah. the brother is right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It starts in the homes. Mm-hmm. But also the community has a responsibility. Definitely. I mentioned this in one of my talks. Like growing up as a kid, I understood what that means even before Islam. Mm-hmm. Because we were governed by all the adults. We were more mm-hmm. afraid of the adults in the community than we were mm-hmm. the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm talking about when I used to get in trouble with school, 
Mm-hmm. My first lick came from the school crossing guard. She would literally mm-hmm. cross me across the street and then mm-hmm. hit me upside the mm-hmm. head. And I heard, I heard mm-hmm. what you did. She telling me the whole time mm-hmm. she crossed the street. I heard about you in school. Mm-hmm. I heard you. Your grandma was such a nice person. I hit your butt across the street. That's the first lick. <laughs> now all the way to the crib, I'm uh, hearing that. Yo, I heard it, but we. Mm, everybody, yeah, by the time you got home, it's like yeah, you already got it. Never doing that. Again. Yeah, you know yeah. That's too many handprints on. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. too many fingerprints. Too many chefs in the kitchen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> by the time you get home, you already cooked. So it's like yeah. these are things that are implemented yeah. in some of the lands. Yeah. That. The youth come from definitely, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your father's Abdullah man. He's a love. Yeah. He's a pillar of the community, and you yeah. trying to, you know, you, yeah. everybody's gonna be on your head. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because yeah. they know that Abdullah man is good to you. Yeah. They know that your mother, alhamdulillah, is good to you. They know mm-hmm. that these family do everything and anything to take care of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. everyone becomes concerned. Definitely. And that reciprocates throughout the whole community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know. This issue is not something that's light. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like I mentioned, and, and not to like, you know, try to stir the pot or shoot mm-hmm. no shots, mm-hmm. but I do see a lot of brothers that's busy with so many other affairs. Yeah. That yeah. do have, that do take precedence in Islam. Yeah. But because some brothers are overly invested in some of those affairs, mm-hmm. they're missing out on some yeah. pinnacle things yeah. that are truly affecting our community. Yeah. And that's, you know, lack of attentive to the youth mm-hmm. and their needs and what they need, mm-hmm. you know. They mm-hmm. need big brothers. They yeah. need some of us, yeah. you know, saying to walk with them to school, mm-hmm. chop it up with them and not always yeah. be admonishment. Because admonishment yeah. all the time doesn't mm-hmm. really resonate. And that's mm-hmm. why I chose a particular hadith that I mentioned about mm-hmm. how the prophesied son of dealt with a, a youth that yeah. came to him and asked him for permission to commit Zina. Right. Yeah. You can measure that request with mm-hmm. some of the craziness that we see today. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. got kids asking similar stuff with underlying yeah. meanings. Like, can I yeah. go over the, you know, yeah. like I go over the Abdul Hakim house. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. what Abdul Hakim doing. I know what yeah. they're doing over, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, like, yeah. it's no different than blatantly asking, of, of course, yeah. give me permission to commit yeah. Zena. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or giving me permission to go into an environment that's harmful mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Can I please go to the such and such? You know what's mm-hmm. happening there. Yeah. The yeah. youth over there is not all Muslim. They're mm-hmm. over there smoking weed, they're over doing this and that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But because there's other Muslims that got permission to go, mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. you want to follow them. And that's why I yeah. say, you know, your peers mm-hmm. play a very significant role as well. So, yeah. alhamdulillah, you know, I could do this all day because I love <laughs> the youth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I love Islam. And, mm-hmm. and I really, like, wanted to point something out, too, as well. And, and, mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll, you know, pass the own. Um, I started something on Instagram called the Halal Drip Shop. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We started off as just me... The brother Umar, Stack Five, Tone Trump, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I, I could be patient with the Muslims. Like I spent nine years in federal prison. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I learned to be very patient with the Muslims. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because in, 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 in the prison system, the Muslims are really, you know, one phone call, one email away, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, from abandoning ship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Holding on to the rope of Allah is like, you know, like yeah. the prophet says, some says, like holding on the hot coal. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of brothers still doing little thirty year sentences, not being you yeah. know kids um, growing up without so on and so forth. So mm-hmm. it's like holding on to Islam is something that's very very serious. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you know, um, Subhanallah, lost my train of thought. The, the halal drip. Halal drip. Thing. Yeah, the halal drip joint. Mm-hmm. So basically. It was the show to Shabab that, mm. alhamdulillah, you could still be fresh and be Muslim. Yeah. 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 You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the page took off. It's like maybe mm. 16,000 followers, and all of mm-hmm. the young people started showcasing their poems mm-hmm. and their little J's and everything mm-hmm. on Jumwa. And it became mm-hmm. something widespread. Where I'm posting kids from Jordan, from over here, over there. And mm-hmm. I felt like that was what you were saying, Elias, about, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and um, about embracing the Islamic identity. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when it comes to this matter, and I don't want to be winded, 
but it's very important for us to understand that I'm being everybody on this, you know, call can mm -hmm. contest to this. Yeah. And when it comes to the Islamic identity, it's not mm -hmm. just one identity. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you were, you know, your brother's been to Saudi before, inshallah, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you walk around with an Izar, that's like mm -hmm. wearing underwear outside. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If I've done that. Yemen, yeah, yeah, but if you was in yeah. Yemen, yeah. you're straight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you, you styling at all. You styling 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, you yeah. got a lot of parts of West Africa. Your stuff yeah, don't definitely. look shiny and bright. Yeah, yeah. You know, you looking out of pocket. Yeah. And you got, you know, the Pakistanis, they're going to wear a shower with Kameez and yeah. so on and so forth. So it's like, yeah. this is what also has to be taught to the youth as well. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because sometimes the barometer set for our identity is the yeah. student of knowledge. Yes, yes. You have to have an all white crispy throw. You have yeah, and the nice Shana. mark block, yeah, mark yeah. block pen. You got to yeah. say you got yeah, yeah. the, the, the imam or something, yeah, the butra or whatever. Was, butra, yeah. like, this, you know what I'm saying? This yeah, becomes yeah, the yeah. epitome of our identity. Yes, yes. So I always like to refer back to Philadelphia because yeah. the African Americans, Yeah. You know, having a stronghold in this land. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia is yeah, hundred percent at the you know at the Pinnacle. pinnacle of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I always mention this in some of my talks. When I go to Philly, mm -hmm. I don't give salams. I wait for salams to come to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I've hurled salams out in the air and every time. Like, nah, yeah. nah. I, I, I ain't Muslim. I, yeah, yeah. I'm not Muslim. I'm not a boy Muslim. Yeah, like, hold yeah. Up, we all look, all look Muslim. Muslim. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that just shows you that the Muslims can have that much influence in the yeah. community Definitely. that even the non-Muslims can Definitely. openly mm -hmm. imitate us. Yeah. When you're talking yeah. about secretly, yeah, yeah. you know openly. what I'm saying, or take a little bits and pieces, you're talking about yeah. openly just imitate us yeah. Yeah. from head to toe, yeah. you know. So when I visit places like Minnesota, mm -hmm. Seattle, so on and so yeah. forth, where you have predominantly, you know, Somali yeah. communities, I'm yeah. like, man, y'all really literally the only Muslims here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if y'all don't, like, I mean, yeah. these people are seeing the invasion. They're seeing y'all yeah. coming through in abundance. Yeah, y'all got yeah. three, mm -hmm. four, five, ten cousins coming in every month. <laughs> yeah. just get, you know, y'all yeah. buying little strip malls, yeah. businesses yeah. showing up. Yeah. Even y'all, some of got y'all Russian one got no no English, just Somali. Yeah, Somali so on it. So it's yeah. like yeah, so yeah. it's like these are the things that I see as an empowerment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with Pakistanis come to community, yeah. they buy up the master, they get the yeah. master, they buy all the houses, yeah, 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 yeah. Area, so they got the pharmacy, yeah. doctor's office, everything. Yeah, you know what yeah, yeah. So it's like these are things that I feel that the youth need to be involved in. And yeah. I always stress this. I think me and you had this conversation as well about the administration mm -hmm. involving the youth in things that have to yeah. do with the master. Definitely, yeah. Because that is the flagpole. Yeah. yeah. That is the headquarters. That's the seed mm -hmm. that's being planted in that particular area for Definitely. this land. Definitely. Everything that spreads from there comes from the house of Allah. It comes from the master. Definitely, definitely. You know, and if the youth not involved with that and they just get put to sleep with a basketball court or something mm. to preoccupy them. Yeah, that's you know what Like, you know, administ uh, administration meetings should have some youth in it. Yeah. They should know what's going on with their lives when, in real time. Exactly. exactly. Not exactly. somebody pull them to the side, well, you know, we're thinking about doing this. Yeah. Or we're going to do this. Yeah. Like, I don't got a choice. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't have no option. No yeah. Pain. Like, I can't yeah. say nothing. Like, maybe yeah. I want to, you know, yeah, maybe wanna, you want to play soccer. Maybe you don't yeah. want to play basketball. Exactly. You want to exactly. swim. Like, yeah. you ain't even yeah. ask us. You know? yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. those are the things that, you know, because they not only been home July, make two years for me, I think. It's mm -hmm. still surreal for me. I'm just happy mm -hmm. to be home, happy to be able to do something that's beneficial, you know, so on and so forth. But it's mm -hmm. like, I just love. Being around the brothers that understand, yeah. you know, where the problems lie and where the solutions yeah, that we have to come up with, inshallah. Yeah, the the, the point before um for them before we move to the next point, yeah. I wanna uh, expand on the point our brother Amir started uh, started with, which was um the the immigrant families that come to the country, and I've yeah. had this this discussion with many many brothers, especially from my my background we all share the um you know similar things is the, the the disconnect that exists between the parents the point you mentioned about the community back home 
you know, I, I wasn't born in Canada. I grew up here most of my life, but I came here when I was two years old. Actually, I lived in Harlem before Toronto, actually. <laughs> in the <laughs> 90s, yeah. <laughs> before, even, <laughs> even before coming to Toronto. And, uh, but when I was in Africa, I would uh, leave the house two years old, wander around and reach another neighborhood and someone would bring me back home. That's how close the community was. And, and our parents came to these countries not knowing the dynamics of the West. And, yeah, so, sure. and so now when they send you, like back home, if you would send your child to school, you could, it's somewhere you trusted. And they came here thinking better education, better this, better that, not knowing the harms that existed. And they would send us to school thinking it's a place of trust. And so when we learn the things we learn and our culture is also changing, they're not even noticing. They're not understanding. Christmas is a foreign you know, concept to Somalis. And yeah. in fact, it's a foreign concept. Yeah. You know, Santa Claus, never heard of these things. But then you come here and that's celebrated in class when you're in kindergarten, grade one. Um, all these different things, all the different holidays, all these different things. Um, there's a culture, your, your, their child is, is, is learning another culture, assimilating, and they're still upon what they're upon. And so in the beginning, it's innocent, uh, meaning gifts and, you know, buy toys for kids and this and that. But once they reach, even before middle school, it starts becoming creed, it starts becoming beliefs. Uh, and, yeah. and these are the things the parents are not educated on, whether it, even from the angle of just not knowing English. They don't even understand, you know, many majority of our parents that came to these countries don't even understand what it is that their child is learning. And, you know, what's the problem with giving gifts? We came to Canada eating pork, not knowing it was pork uh, because we couldn't read the label when we first came. We couldn't read what it was. And I, mean, I didn't know I was young. But my parents told me that. And subhanAllah. So we dealt with those things. And now what we see, the result of that. Um, you know, youth having no connection with their parents um, and the destruction of the home, whether it be the society, whether it be the, the governing system and how they deal with families, you know. Um, but this, this is uh, like when we say, you know, it starts with the home, that's just a general statement, you know. But even within the home, there's so many different layers that have to be tackled to find a solution for the Muslim youth. Um, it even differs from culture to culture. Pakistanis have certain, you know, uh, things that maybe yes. Somalis don't have and Arabs have different, you know, things. Uh, so it's a big thing. And uh, like our brother said, there's a lot, there's a lot that needs to be, you know, um, discussed and, and, uh, and, and dealt with. And not just, as you said, you know, a lot of brothers are busy with other things um, a lot of the time. And then there's a negligence. And uh, sometimes that negligence is what even alienates the youth. Um, you mentioned harshness, but sometimes when a youth finds no place for them themselves in, in the masajid, when you see masajid, only elders are there. And just yeah. a couple of kids who, you know, were, were fortunate enough to have um, practicing parents. And that's why they're there. But the majority of the youth are not there. You know, they're not there. And they don't have someone who understands. One of the points I, I had written actually was that... The imams and, uh, you know, to be a, a leader in a community, a, you know, Islamic leader in a community, it is no longer sufficient to only know the deen, meaning the ahkam in the religion. No, you know, it's not sufficient. You have to know what's actually happening. Why are the youth astray? Back in, in my time, when I was younger in high school, you would find Muslims sinning and, and, and things like that. I know our brother mentioned and somehow that part affected me because I wasn't always practicing myself and I, you know, I had a past and there was no justification, um, you know, for why we were choosing other than our religion. But um, the time in, that I even lived in, let's say the high school for me was um, early 2000s to mid 2000s. Um, that time you found Muslims sinning, but you didn't find, you would find them like if you give them a reminder, Oh, brother, you know, make dua for me. Or our sister would say, you know, brother, make dua. I'm struggling. Yeah. People would acknowledge. They would acknowledge no. their weakness. Mm -hmm. Today, there's people, they're defending their, their sins. Awesome. They're just not only justifying, they're, they're, there's a war against the, the servitude to Allah. 
the obedience to Allah, uh, anything religion based, whether even if, even if it's Christianity or Judaism, whatever, any form of religion, any form of, you know, a set of rules that tells you, you can't do this and this is what you have to do. There's a war on that. And many of the imams, especially if they're like we mentioned, who came to this country and have a language barrier and this and that, they don't know what is actually happening. They just see the results youth killing themselves and overdosing on drugs and this and that but they actually have no idea why it's happening they don't know they may know in a general sense social media okay but what about social media what exactly is happening on social media oh it's uh the education system okay what exactly are they learning that is making them like this and this is this ultimate you know um, unrestricted freedom that a lot of youth believe nowadays you know it's secularism and liberalism yeah. That we're free to do as we wish. No one can tell me what I can do. And that's the, the foundation of Tawheed. The foundation of Tawheed. And that's what's missing. But it's happening in so many different ways. And the, the people who are involved in da'wah today, from whatever aspect, it could be an imam, it can be student of knowledge, it can be you know, um, uh, people who, like our brother Amir, who ha- they have to know these things in order to tackle these issues. They have to no, know no. where the disease is in order to cure it. And without that, um, it, it's going to be the same thing we've been seeing for the past 20 to 30 years in the, in the Muslim communities. Or bring a guest speaker and let him speak to the youth. Like someone who they think may relate to the youth. Like an athlete no, no. or a celebrity. or you know, It has to be someone who actually knows the, the yeah. actual issues. It can't just be they know the youth like basketball. So let me bring this basketball player to help speak to them Absolutely. about drugs. And that stuff will work maybe for that day, but it's not going to be the thing that guides the youth. It's not Absolutely. going to be the thing that makes them go back to their dean and realize the significance and importance of their dean. Um, we have that issue, especially in the city of Toronto, um, is a lot very similar to Minnesota, Minneapolis, where a lot of the youth are involved in drugs, overdosing, yeah. dying at the age of 17, 18, 19, it's like an epidemic, huge problem with that and drug, you know, gang life and street life and these types of things. But a lot of it stems from a lot of these things, this belief that I'm free to do what I want and you know, the yeah. home is broken and there's so many different layers. But the people who would you would expect or, or the parents, for example, are looking to to solve these issues are people who actually have no idea what, it, what is what yeah. is happening to the youth. And that's what that's what's required. So the, the brothers, especially the brothers who are around my age or who studied abroad and come back and grew up in these societies, they have to educate themselves on these things, on the, yeah. the, the, the actual issues with the youth today. And what is the, the underlying issue, not just the result and, okay, drugs are bad, shooting your brother in Islam is bad. They already know that. But what is the core issue that, that is leading the youth to this? And um, that is what that is what has to be tackled now. It's not sufficient yeah. to just know Sahih al Bukhari and be a Hafid Quran yeah, anyway. Yeah. That's not. It's not sufficient. Well, even to that point, there's not many. Even if even for that as, from that aspect, even in terms of knowledge, there's a big uh, deficiency because of course, yeah. they find a few centers which are active in knowledge, mm-hmm. and then others are not. So even that 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 ability to, for example, to teach even the deen, yeah. benefit from your locality in terms yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. Even that is almost non-existent. 100%. 100% yeah. That is almost non-existent. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to do something in there. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say I agree with the brother. And I definitely believe that it takes a lot more cooperation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot more cooperation. And that's another thing that I see you know, has been, you know, a lot of negligence in that matter, so to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing is, we've raised the status of those who are entrusted with benefiting the people with the knowledge that they acquired from sitting with the scholars. We've Mm -hmm. raised you know, the status of the imams. But you, you hear it even from the youth, like, you know, they ask the imam. Yeah. It's like they don't even want to engage yeah. in anything. Yeah, in a discussion, yeah. The, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. 
Oh, why you asking me? Asking mm. me. Yeah, yeah. So, and not only that, because of the people subjecting themselves to these brothers who have been entrusted with these responsibilities, mm-hmm. it becomes very burdensome for them as well. Hundred percent. They're yeah. not protecting because it's like mm-hmm. it could be a fitness for them. Yep, definitely. So yeah. You actually start believing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you you know you come home from study and you're the savior of the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That could be a fitness for you. Big time. Yeah. Or also can be a burden for you mm-hmm. to where it's weighing on you so heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know you can turn to the other man, you mm-hmm. know, and ask you know for advice and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But the implementation still yeah. remains weighty mm-hmm. because. Yeah. The early mm-hmm. men are not here of course, to yeah. assist you in implementing exactly. yeah. what's exactly. needed. You know, yeah. so like you said, there's a whole another additional education that mm-hmm. has to be, you know, has to run simultaneous mm-hmm. with the beneficial knowledge that's sought from the Quran and Sunnah. Mm-hmm. And I think that when we dig more into the lives, the lives of the companions, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying. And busy ourselves with that. And I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the the young communities I go to, especially the ones that have madrasas and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. I always do like the Sahaba Challenge. Yeah. I say, your name 10 campaigns. Mm -hmm. Minus the four rightly got a (laughs) khulifa. And minus the bashara ashara. Everybody get quiet, right? (laughs) I do this purposely because I know what happens at that very moment Mm -hmm. is everyone feels like they're being tested with coming up with 10 on their own. Mm-hmm. So you get that little quiet moment because it's like, yeah. man, mm-hmm. you done took Omar Abu Bakr here to uh, you, done took that, yeah. you done took, you know what I'm saying, before <laughs> that was granted. Mm-hmm. So, but then I said, no, 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 no. Y'all gonna figure this out together. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, well, Allah, yeah, they come up with 25, 30. Yeah, even, mashallah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So mashallah. I do this because I try to get into the headspace yeah, yeah. how the youth think mm-hmm. and it comes with a lot of the burdens that come with so much information they got so yeah. much access so much information yeah. it's very hard for them to make their mind up yeah they don't know how to make their mind up yeah yeah well it's different when i was young you're gonna play basketball you're gonna do music mm-hmm. or you're gonna hustle you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. so we had a couple of choices we had to narrow that down real quick and it wasn't that mm-hmm. hard Mm-hmm. But when you got 21 different options, yeah. all the way down to I could just be an influencer. Yeah. I could just get on social media and embarrass myself. Every yeah. Day and make yeah. Of yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. Yeah. that to even be an option mm-hmm. is insane. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I say that to say that you're absolutely right mm-hmm. that some of us, like yourself, mm-hmm. you had the experience. You know what I'm saying? What it is to deviate from what mm-hmm. you were taught, what you were raised upon. Yeah. By Allah's mercy to be brought back mm-hmm. to where, you know mm-hmm. what? I was able to experience and see what that's like. Yeah. So you become more, or you become more receptive to yeah, you. Yeah. Opposed to someone who may have spent ten years in the desert studying, and ain't never mm-hmm. been a factor out here. In the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, and you, you all fiery and everything on the men mm-hmm. bar, a lot of mm-hmm. admiration, and people looking at yeah. you like, yo, bro, you, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I ain't never seen you out here. Yeah, what block you from? Like, you yeah, know, and yeah. people don't realize that that's still the issue. Yeah. Because yeah. in order for a person to receive you, it's the same even in any in, in, in East Africa. Yeah, it's the same. You know what it is. It's like yeah. you can't just mm-hmm. you gotta be known in the community. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just come out of the back mm-hmm. of a you know what yeah. I'm saying, a mm-hmm. butcher shop or something to talk yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, who are you? Yeah. So when we kinda get so religious mm-hmm. that we forget mm-hmm. about the cultures yeah. that we left behind. Yeah. You can very much be young yourself and be disconnected from the youth. Hundred percent. Yeah. Subhanallah, you can actually be young yourself. Yeah. Been away a little too long. Yeah. Whether it's Egypt, Yemen, Saudi, mm-hmm. wherever it is, you've been away mm-hmm. a little too long. Yeah. A lot yeah. has transpired. 
Big Ten time, years yeah. you was gone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you come back after you that did your thesis and everything. Now when yeah. you come back, yeah. it's like, who is you? Yeah. yeah. You know? And a lot of times, brothers don't think to incorporate mm-hmm. people who have been present while you yeah. were gone. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. utilizing their credibility, yeah. their reputation, their yeah. rapport with the people, yeah. and utilizing that. Yeah, but it becomes mm-hmm. this. You know what? I'm the one that went and studied. Yeah, I'm the one that's entrusted with this. Mm-hmm. Now I fall back. I yeah. got this. I got this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. next thing you know, instinctively, he only falls into a space mm-hmm. that's familiar with his scholastic career. Is a he, he only to... falls in, Yeah, he only falls into a space yeah. with preaching to the same choir. Yeah, preaching to exactly. Yeah. So it was like. Yeah. I believe, because I'm going to be honest with you, I mm. I really feel appreciated when I see that brother do actually call on me mm. to bring whatever ammunition I have. Yeah. No one's calling me yeah. to be the deciding factor. Yeah. It's like Brother Amir. Yeah. This is, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah. You know, we have other people that's been entrusted with other affairs. Mm-hmm. How did he lie? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, and I may do out for him while I'm traveling. Yeah. But to 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 acknowledge that, yeah, there is some benefit that comes with someone who, you know, spent significant time mm-hmm. in that space and I can yeah. relate to a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing that made me, you know, very uh, um cognizant. Mm-hmm how to be a benefit in that space is because I ask questions. Mm. When I sit with the youth, I ask them questions. Mm. I give them the opportunity to be teachers because they have the ability. Mm -hmm. They're not completely oblivious. We don't ask them questions. Mm -hmm. When I went to Philly with Law, and I'm going to stop here. Mm -hmm. I was asking, I was hearing all of the other brothers, you know, the elders Mm -hmm. saying about Mm -hmm. the issue in Philly being the murder capital and all that. Mm-hmm. I asked a young boy, mm-hmm. young brother, mashallah. He mm-hmm. said, "I okay, keep man, them PPP loans, man." Mm-hmm. I said, "Huh? I ain't <laughs> nobody say that." <laughs> After they gave us so much money, he said, "Everybody went and bought guns." He said, "About uh-huh. two, three guns in everybody house uh-huh. because of them PPP loans." Uh-huh. And nobody was thinking it. I'm thinking. Uh-huh. I'm talking to all of the people that you know has been entrusted in charge, with their yeah. affairs. And they mm. think it is about abandoning the mass shit. Yeah, this is now mm-hmm. y'all need to do this, y'all need to do that. Yeah. And brother said they we got too much money out. Because well, uh, everybody was going to get it, a check. Mm-hmm. All ages. People were referring uh, other people just to get a cut. <laughs> yeah, you just want something and I put you on to it. Uh, so you understand like what's yeah. happening to these young kids is getting yeah. a substantial amount of money, uh, money that they yeah. probably would have never touched. Yeah. And the first thing they thinking. Is what everybody else was thinking. Exactly. exactly yeah. You know, Abdurrahim went and bought like three guns. I'm going to mm. give you two. Yeah. I got to get me one. You know, them dudes yeah. on the other side of town, they uh-huh. buying up a whole bunch of them. We got to buy yeah. a whole bunch of them, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. And that becomes the seed that's planted. Yeah. You know, yeah. and a lot of times we know from history yeah. that wealth plays a very significant yeah. role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And inciting yeah. fitness. Big time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, mm. I, I appreciate y'all actually, you know, especially you, Afi, coming up yeah. with this subject because yeah. it's very, very dear to me. Yeah. And inshallah, you know, may Allah, you know, you know, unite our hearts and, uh, and, 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 and give us the ability to cooperate with one another and then join it with good and forbid it was evil. Amen. You know, Amen. and remove us from the plight of, mm-hmm. you know, selfishly taking on mm-hmm. too many responsibilities mm-hmm. and leaving off, you know, some of the, you know, some some individuals, yeah. male and female, alhamdulillah, yeah. that can actually help and assist yeah. and, you yeah. know, because, you know, the sisters are very active in the match. Oh, more, than the, more than the brothers. More than the men. Yeah. Final law, the sisters yeah. is on everything. Yeah. You stay yeah. conference, they got it all set up, tables, yeah. everything, food, yeah. cooked. Yeah. All yeah. you're doing getting up there to talk. Yeah. Um, I'm saying when people start talking about 
uh, other cities, other states about how yeah. beautiful it was. Marshall yeah. it was nice. They had the yeah. vendors lined up. It was yeah. beautiful. Man, the sisters be doing all that. Yeah, 100%. Well, well one point I want to add actually to that effect, yeah. actually, back to, not just backtrack, but just want to mention something that could be thought provoking for some of the youth, especially the boys, is that um, when, we, when, when it is said to them that, you know, understand your value that you bring to the table as a, as a young Muslim man and the blessing that you have, uh, one thing that should really push men to, and young boys to become men quick is this rujula, this masculinity, which yeah. enables them to be, to be yeah. what? To be leaders uh, yes. in the world. Now, yeah. here's the problem, uh, back to what both of you said, actually, is that um, many women now in the West, in the immigrant families that come, maybe in first generation, the sisters are more practicing than the men. And yeah. that relationship, it never goes well. Because hmm. she cannot see him to be a respectable man yeah. in terms of religion. Yeah. The hmm. most important thing for her, a woman who uh, obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and applies, uh, you know, the ahkam that are hmm. wajib upon her, obligatory upon her, the rulings which are obligatory upon her, she hmm. cannot respect and accept anything less. Yeah. And so that is actually a discord which comes apparent in yeah. different families and different households is that mm. you have a woman who is pushing her child and she's doing a great job she's doing everything but the father mm. is kind of like he's mm. not finding it important you know yeah, yeah so i feel like that is also just one thing i wanted to mention because yeah that's true you know we, we give it to the sisters a lot and you know much like mm -hmm. you guys mentioned important mm -hmm. points where we uh, praise them for the good work that they do mm -hmm. Thing is that the men gotta step it up too, you know. Because yes, yes, definitely. Like, yeah. Definitely gotta step it up, man. Because mm. the, the, the thing with the sisters, they're forced to pick from the litter. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, because it's like I got it. Okay, you know what? You know, Ahmed mm. plays, but he hangs out late. You know what? Mm. It's like they gotta pick through. <laughs> you know, yeah. What the remnants can still remain? Yeah. 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 Versus, I gotta accept somebody's shortcomings because this is what's more prevalent. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. this dude, you know, he smokes cigarettes, but mashallah, he got a little corner hand under him. Yeah, or, yeah. You, know, you know, this guy, yeah. you know, what I'm saying yeah. he barely prays, but mashallah, he's very gentle. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like you gotta, yeah, yeah. You gotta you know, compromise. This is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. forced yeah. to pick through mm -hmm. the litter, so to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is where the youth, you know, if you're listening, hey. you gotta step up. Yeah. You gotta that's step why they, up. That's why the young men they should be they should be happy that if you bring that to the table and you're holding it down, khalas, yani, this is glad tidings for you because mm -hmm. you're not only gonna be able to protect yourself and lead a household to be that which you need to be for your mm -hmm. self, your family, your community, but you can also take on the responsibility of more than that. You mm -hmm. can ask for more if you can handle it under your belt. Yeah, yeah. That's the lives of a gel upon you. Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. And the one thing I do want to say about the sisters. You know, which I noticed is an issue with this generation mm -hmm. is when it comes to the affair of marriage, mm -hmm. the sisters, if you're listening, you have to stop disarming your fathers. Uh, disarming them meaning they're your guardians. Mm -hmm. They're the first line of defense. Yeah. Stop wow. telling these young brothers everything to say, what not to say, don't mention mm -hmm. this, because you're disarming them. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. not allowing him to be the protect guardian. you. So, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. now what you have is a brother who is not deserving, mm -hmm. extremely negligent in his obligation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sounding like the perfect guy. Yeah. You don't groom him and gave him all the deal points, all the tools. All you know, yeah, you gave him yeah. all the tools. Yeah. You're about to make a fool out of your father. Yeah, your, a lot people, of stuff. your family. Everything. Mm -hmm. This is something that I learned to be really widespread with some of the the Muslim yes. women who mm -hmm. have an inclination to these Catholics. What yes. happens is you get these guys that take Shahada. They don't know mm -hmm. Aleph at tat, but mm -hmm. you tell them everything to do. Yeah, the Jalsa. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and these are the things that I've learned, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, on my travels outside yeah. of the affairs of the young the young brothers. Mm -hmm. Is that the sisters as well is yeah. finding themselves, and this is how they're acting upon their inclination to the, to, mm -hmm. to the yeah, yeah. And, and this actually that point actually comes from the desperation of the sisters. Exactly. When you say the, the the desperation of what they have to choose from, so exactly. they have to prop they have to prop that one up just so she can get married. 
It's the inspiration. So, you know, mm-hmm. all of this stuff, I'm just sponging it up. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be a, a part of me. Wish I could do more. Yeah, subhanAllah. But I know that it's going to take a community. It's going to take a Definitely. village. Yeah. 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 Teamwork yeah. makes teamwork. It's quite simple, you know. That's, that's what it is. And, 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 you know, just to, we'll just finish off with the, the, these. Uh, the, last, the last question. I just want to mention a funny story about uh, Philly and the Izar because uh, there was one brother <laughs> who came from America. One brother mm-hmm. who came from America. He came here. I'm not going to say which state. And he came mm-hmm. here. We're hosting him here. One of the conferences of our Sheikh Omeitan mm-hmm. many years ago. And mm-hmm. so he wanted to... Uh, Marry a sister. We connected him with the family and everything. So the brother comes to my house. He's wearing an izar. Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to get married to the sister living here? We're not in Philly, <laughs> 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 the, the brother got this hearted, but we had to get him all outfits of how to lie. You know? <laughs> yeah. Philly boy yeah. come to a new car with goggles to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the, that drip. They got it. Alhamdulillah. They hold it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, actually, what I do say is that, you know, Ahl Toronto, GTA, mm. Greater Toronto area, Wallahi, it's embarrassing mm. for us because, yani, in our, you know, metropolitan area, there are so many Muslims, mm. Muslims everywhere, but the Sunnah mm. is not apparent. It's yeah, apparent. it's not apparent. The sure. sisters hold it down with the hijab facts, uh, yeah. the word the jibab, or the khimar, the qab, but brothers, not holding it down, Wallah. Yeah, is yeah, Adina, Wallah. it's true, it's true. That's actually the same vibe that you get in Philadelphia. You can get mm. that easily. Because there's a lot of massages, a lot of things, but the youth, obviously, uh, I guess you could say in Canada, maybe it's a little bit different than the States, mm-hmm. but the Hawiya Islamiyah, yeah, Islam, the identity, is very uh, weekend. And that's what we hope, inshallah, mm-hmm. that, you know, we'll wrap it up here. Then, inshallah, next week, uh, we have mm-hmm. another one, uh, mm-hmm. podcast final discussion about advice and guidance to the incarcerated. So, for Muslims mm-hmm. and all Muslims, mm-hmm. males and females. Uh, inshallah. And then, inshallah, we have more in, in future. And if our brother, and our respected elder Amir can join us for those. Will be great. Inshallah. This yeah. possible marriage and other solutions, you know. Another thing we want to talk about is, um, you know, not everyone talks about it and it's dumb, but obviously gender roles and the intersexual mm. dynamics, and they just yeah. completely destroy it because the mm. also of it goes back to Tawheed. Yeah. We missed the mark with that. Yes, yes. Marriage. So those are topics we want to go more into and even personal development because yeah, you know, no. here at the Ilyas, you guys mentioned points where mm. we have identified an issue and what we need to do, but now. What are the practical steps we can give for the shabab to develop themselves to get them? Mm. You know what I mean. Mm. Any yeah. closing remarks, inshallah, and we'll end it off there. So next week, same time, we've got the the panel, inshallah. We got a lot of brothers, brothers mm. who've been incarcerated before in in UK, in Europe, in Canada, and America, joining us. Some students of knowledge. Inshallah. 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 So Amir, you can end off remarks, and Ilyas, and we cut it, inshallah. 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 I just, I just want to ask Allah to make you know make. You know, place Bardaka in this and all our efforts, inshallah. Inshallah. You know, and make this heavy on our scale of good deeds. Mm-hmm. We have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah, you know, to keep our hearts united and keep us in communication, inshallah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, likewise. And um, I just pray and, and hope also that this is the first of many. Um, yeah. And that, inshallah, we can get you over here to Canada soon. I remember yeah. we spoke about it. We spoke about yeah. it in, in Atlanta. The law make it easy, inshallah. Out, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be the last yeah. time I was there with Allah. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. spent the night in, in jail. And they got yeah. in, at the airport. They locked me up. Yes, in the I remember. Uh, yeah. in what year was this? Happening? What year? Uh, 2010? Like, yeah, 2010. Yeah, 2010, yeah. yes. I, I had got through a few times, and I was cool. Mm-hmm. I went Toronto, then I went to um um I went to Ottawa. Ottawa, so no, like when I was in the music business, mm-hmm. I was getting a pass because you know mm-hmm. we got a war for much music and you know, yes, yeah, back then, yes, you know, it was much music. Type yeah. of situation. It was some strings yeah. getting for yeah. As soon as I, as soon as that beard start growing and that <laughs> I used to listen to the machine in the back. That joint was just printing out all kinds of paper, and I'm scratching my head because uh-huh. humbly lie, I like it's like you become Muslim, you forget about your past. Yeah, you sincere because I literally, uh-huh. I just heard the machine went chin 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 chin. 
Chichen, chichen, chichen. Mm. <laughs> they put the album on the table. I was like, man, who the fuck is that? <laughs> man, they pulled up everything <laughs> I've oh, ever so done in my life. And I'm just so like, subhanAllah. I'll reward you for the, the effort, inshallah. Yes, yeah, sir. We can put some strings to make it happen. Inshallah, we'll try to make that work. Inshallah. I'm definitely open to it, man. Yeah, sure. Well, we ended up there, inshallah. We'll see everyone uh, next week for the next one. Inshallah. Inshallah.